Here's another problem that some homeowners deal with, and that would be siding, whether it is wood, metal, vinyl, or cement fiberboard that is buried in the ground. This does create problems for the building if it is below the foundation line. Now keep in mind that some siding will be absorbing water. This would be any products made out of wood. Um, and this will be a problem for the siding also. Now another problem is that, and this is probably more common, is that the soil or the exterior um, ground level is only about an inch below the siding. Now most of the time the siding will be installed an inch below the foundation. This is real common. And so you're only two inches from here, top of the soil, to the top of the building foundation. And that might not always be the best um, situation either. Here's what it would look like basically if you had some siding and I'm using lap siding but you can imagine plywood siding or other types of siding also. When I said that it's about an inch below, this is real common. They will nail a starter strip onto the bottom plate or whatever you're using here and then they will run the building paper below the foundation line about an inch and the siding about an inch also. This allows water to continually flow off of this. Let's just say that the building paper starts to deteriorate, which it often does, that depending on what type of building paper you're using, of course. The water would run off and it would still go onto the slab and down. So this is a common way and I wanted to show you this before I got into the rest of the video to give you an idea of uh, the most common construction method used for installing siding. Here's a better example of what I'm referring to. The soil is above the siding. Any water that runs off will accumulate around the bottom or into the soil here or whatever you're using as a ground cover and if this is the case and it is dirt then the soil is going to get behind the siding and allow for or give it some type of a conduit that's where the where this water the moisture will transfer from the soil into the wood the wood will absorb the moisture out of the soil and eventually you will start to have your framing components and the siding it will start to rot. When I say eventually it could be uh, 50 years who knows depends on how much water you're getting and what side of the building this is. You know this is a problem area or going to be a bigger problem if it's in a, in a shaded area or an, a side of the house that gets uh, very little sun so just keep that in mind also but you can see the problem here if this is the case and you, you have a house like this, the soil level will need to be lowered. And the minimum distance that most building codes um, require is six inches from the top of the soil to the top of the building foundation, not the bottom of the siding, to the top of the foundation. So if your siding is an inch below, then you would only need five inches of um, between the bottom of the siding and the top of the soil. Here's another situation you could run into and that would be where the siding somehow attaches to the concrete stem wall and is a little lower than the top of the foundation. And we're, we're some situation where you'd have like two to three feet from the top of the soil to the top of the stem wall. You could end up with a situation like this. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because sometimes you're going to have your siding is going to be buried and you're going to have a situation like this where all you would need to do to make this repair would be to simply remove this piece of siding and, um, and, and fix it like this. This would be the situation. So if you have siding buried underneath the dirt, then the best advice I could give you is find out where the top of the foundation is. Whether you can do that on the outside, you can see it, 
or you need to go on the inside and do some measuring. Um, you know, you could always measure, find out how thick the floor is, the floor joist, something like that, if it's exposed in the basement. If your basement's finished, then obviously you're not going to be able to do this or it's going to be a little more difficult to do it. So if you can't find this line, it's going to be difficult to make this re repair efficiently. You know, if you're dealing with a situation where all of this is waterproofed, then this won't be as big of a big of a deal. Keep in mind the measurement from the top of the concrete stem wall to the soil that most building departments would like to see is six inches. And I'm not suggesting that you need to remove three inches of dirt if you have a two inch gap between the top of the siding or the bottom of the siding and the top of the soil. I would, I would, pro, I would leave that as, as is. I wouldn't go through some extensive work here. Um, anything closer than an inch gap between here could be a problem. And it wouldn't be difficult to remove an inch of soil um, you know, around uh, the area as long as you're not creating a, a pond, some area where it'll pool up. When I'm talking about removing an inch, I'm talking about removing an inch and making sure that, sure that the water drains safely away. So um, I think that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And uh, hopefully I uh, made sense out of this one here. So don't forget to hit the old thumbs up button. That is always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to visit our website, homebuildingandrepairs.com, for more home tips and construction ideas.